Hello YouTube. <clears throat> I uh, decided to make this video because uh, I was looking for an 80% 1911 frame. I was looking for a new project to undertake and uh, I decided that it, it would be an amazing project to build 1911 from an 80% frame and uh, bolt slide and selecting the parts I want and everything basically all the features on it. Uh, basically making it my own 1911, as much my own as, as it can possibly be, let's just say. So, as I was doing my research, I found it very difficult to to actually see what the frames look like uh, in detail. And as, uh, you know, basically as I was not getting as much information as I would like, <coughs> I essentially just bought a tactical machining recon 80% frame and uh, just recently I found someone um, just selling uh, KT ordnance 80% uh, frames online so I didn't buy them from KT ordnance directly I bought them from someone who bought them from KT ordnance directly and <clears throat> and as far as I know they bought them about uh, and I'm talking two frames they bought them about two years ago so I don't know if this frame will represent uh, the current product. We'll start with uh, tactical machining, 80% recon frame. Here, here's how it came. Uh, me and my friend ordered four of them. I got one, he got three. Um, and when he originally gave me this frame, I had a slight issue with it. I found immediately uh, kind of a, a little machining imperfection here in the back side. I'll zoom you in later and show you. But uh, I wanted to show you what this frame looks like. <clears throat> and I'll just show you from all angles so you can hopefully see what you're getting yourself into or the, how the product looks that you're about to buy. This is not a blemished product, um, so some of these imperfections, I think it's just um, how it comes out and what you're going to get. <clears throat> Show you it in the top. So you can see what's been done and what hasn't been done to it. Here's a look at what the what you have to work with as far as rails go. Alright, hopefully you got a good look. So I'm gonna start showing you the <clears throat> the other frame, the KT ordinance frame. Here's the KT ordnance frame. It's made from OptiPlate, and this is made from 4140 uh, steel. <clears throat> Here's the KT ordnance one, kind of in detail. And right away, what I didn't know is that it's a two-piece frame. So you can see uh, it's been soldered or, or uh, welded together, but it's definitely a two-piece frame. And I was pretty surprised by that when I got the frame. <clears throat> but here's a closer look at what you're getting with this frame. As far as weight goes, I think they're pretty much uh, similar, even though this frame is slightly larger. Uh, weight wise, I think they're similar.
And then we'll, we'll start going into differences basically between the frames. Hopefully you're getting a good view <clears throat> as far as what you would need to do, finish, and so on and so forth. So now let's talk about the differences. Uh, <clears throat> first, I guess the similarities. Uh, they're both cut for the 250,000 um, beaver tail. Uh, so this radius is 250,000. Or, or so they say, basically. Uh, both frames are missing the rails for the slide and the hammer and sear uh, pinholes. Okay? <clears throat> and you can probably tell right away what the mo more obvious differences are. Let me position it this way. So you can see. Obviously, this one has a, well, first, longer frame on a KTO frame. So if you get a 5 inch, uh, let's say, STI unique slide or, or one of those slides without the scallop, you'll get the same look as you get with uh, Springfield Library TRP and so on and so forth. <clears throat> this frame is more like a standard frame, maybe a little bit longer um, and has a slightly different shape to it. <clears throat> uh, the trigger guard on the KTO frame is uh, round, obviously, you can see that. This one's square. The uh, KTO frame comes with basically uh, the magwell um, already being a part of the uh, part of the frame, uh, I, I don't know what to call this actually. I know that people buy these and put them on their frames as an attachment. I think it's a huge benefit of having this be a part of the frame and still have the flexibility of putting whatever mainspring housing you want on your on your frame. Uh, <clears throat> the KTO frame comes with a plunger tube. Uh, integral to the frame. On the tactical machining frame you'd have to install one. On the tactical machining frame you have the ejector um, pinhole uh, pre-drilled. On the KTO frame you don't. On the tactical machining frame you have your mainspring housing rails cut into the frame. You can see them right there. On the tactical machine or on the uh, KTO frame you don't. I think as far as dimensions go, well as far as dimensions go I think both frames are, are kind of the same and uh, I think both of them will have a slight gap between the beaver tail and the mainspring housing um, and the sides of the frame. I've done some uh, kind of little fitting on uh, into this frame. I haven't actually tried to fit any parts into this one, but um, the trigger went in. Uh, one of my triggers that was fitted for another frame, it went in um, with a little kind of roughness the uh, pretty much everything I could install into it uh, was you know was installing uh, with some minor fitting required again I haven't actually tried to put anything into this frame but the finish or the the milling um, quality is is much better on this frame than on this frame 
and uh, I think I've mentioned this before take a look at this area right here I'm gonna try to zoom you in I've actually seen a, a few videos and images of these frames and they all seem to have this rough edge here uh, that seem to have been kind of torn out a little bit. This is kind of a better example uh, of this frame. Um, my friend has the three others and one of them is really kind of damaged and rough almost with teeth making up the surface as opposed to a flat kind of smooth surface. <clears throat> so uh, it seems like this flaw will probably be present on every one of these tactical machining frames. There seems to be quite a few um, little things here and there that are easy to take care of and fix. But And, and also this frame is uh, more than, I guess, uh, let me see, this frame, the tactical machining frame was 160 or something like that. This frame is going for 360. So, you be the judge.